Now today, the European Space Agency was expected to launch a satellite to planet Jupiter and its moons, one of its most ambitious missions ever. And that takeoff was due in just a few minutes' time. But we've just heard the launch has been postponed today because of bad weather. Well, covering all of this for us is France 24's Chris Bachmann, uh, and he's joined by an ideal person to explain what was supposed to happen today and what went wrong as well. So, Chris, uh, over to you. Thank you very much. Indeed, it's now going to be tomorrow, around the same time, I think, we think, and um, I have the Mars rover, for the expert to know, the wizard behind that, who's been sending us the videos, the sound for that, and, of course, knows more than any of us about sending something up there. Are you disappointed by what's happened? Uh, well, yes, we are. But honestly, uh, we can wait another day. I mean, we've been working on this. The whole community has been working on this project for nearly 10 years. And we have, we're have we looking for another 10 years. I mean, travel, maybe 12. So I think it's waiting for one day. It's OK. And the, what's remarkable is that even if the launch was today, it takes six years for it to get there. So it puts in perspective yeah, your a bit, train ride. Yeah, a bit, bit, bit more than, I mean, almost eight. I mean, I mean honestly, uh, it's a long way. We don't, we're not going directly to Jupiter. We're going first uh, to the inner solar system. We're even going to uh, meet with Venus. We're going to meet with the Earth, twice the moon, because each time we come close to a planet, we get uh, attraction and speed, we get more speed. And after that, we pass Mars and go to Jupiter, which is altogether five billions kilometer, five b billions, okay? That's a lot. Well, I mean, why are we going to Jupiter? We're still trying to get to the moon. I mean, Jupiter is... We're trying to get to the moon. And we're going to get there this year, um, next year. Uh, we are on Mars. Been there many times. We are on our way to Mercury. We are already around Jupiter with a mission called Juno. Now, Juice is the next one. And next year, there's going to be another one. It's all together. The science community decide, well, what, what depend on your science. And if you go to Jupiter, you want to do two things. First, to understand how a complex system works. I mean, Jupiter is just like almost a sun. It's a big planet with a lot of satellites, more than 50. Four of them are super big. Ganymede is bigger than our own moon. And all these planets, well, we call them satellites on Jupiter, they have water inside. So the first topic is planetary science. How much do I learn from these to, uh, to do this, to add this one, and to understand better Earth? I'm looking at a volcano on Io or on Jupiter. That helps me to better understand the volcanoes on Earth, for example. And the second topic is habitability. It has to do with life. What are the conditions that are necessary to develop life? And we know that on these uh, satellites around Jupiter, there's ice, there's a liquid water, and there are rocks. And it's a very interesting um, habitat where life might exist today. Now, the European, this is the European Space Agency yeah. launch. They're not the first to go to Jupiter, right? No. We're not, we can't say Europeans first. It's all together, but it's true that the US have done a lot. I mean, they don't remember the Pioneer mission, the Voyager, of course. Uh, we've worked together on the Cassini mission. It was for Saturn. So, but it, it's again all together. This time it's Europe. ESA, European Space Agency, going to Jupiter. And we have on board a lot of European instruments, but we also have one from the US. We have a contribution from JAXA, Japan, another contribution from Israel. So you see it's all together, but uh, taking turns. The big hindrance, of course, is how long it takes to get there, of course. It's the same for Mars. We can, uh, it's, it's faster. It's <laughs> faster, but it's, it's just, it's, it's, that's the handicap, right? It takes so long to get there. Yeah, it's, it takes a long time, but uh, in, our, in our job, we, we learn how to be patient, honestly. Uh, to build this spacecraft, it took, what, 10 years? A lot of people, more than 2,000 people to build it, okay? Then we have this cruise phase, we call it the cruise. Then we're going to arrive in um, 31 at Jupiter, stay there for uh, maybe four years, hopefully, and, and maybe more. Yeah, all together, this mission takes, when, 25 years of your life? That's our business. That's how it works. It takes time because it's hard. We go where never one has gone before. I'm going to profit from your, your rover experience, perseverance. Have you found any signs of life yet on Mars? <laughs> That's a good question. Not yet. We're working on it. Um, we have two rovers, uh, Curiosity and Perseverance, going really strong now, uh, taking a lot of data, sending images and sounds and everything. Uh, 
but so far we haven't seen any uh, obvious evidence of life, past life. That's what we're looking for. Uh, but because we're not sure we're going to find them in situ, we are preparing now some samples. We've dropped them on the ground. And there are going to be, uh, in the future, some mission to come take the samples and bring them back to Earth. But uh, in uh, 2031, same time as we're talking, arriving at Jupiter. So it's a long story. There's a lot of space fans watching us now. Yep. If they want to see the video, the sound from Mars, where do they go? Oh, we, we put, first of all, all, all our data are public data. It's very important for us. If you're a scientist, you go to planetary data um, system, you go to a lot of database. If you're just a fan, you go to all these websites that have been put together by our space agency. Uh, it could be CNES because of Anjus, there's a superb uh, instrument on, on Anjus, but uh, we, we have pages for Mars. You can go to ESA, you can go to NASA. I hope we're doing a good job, uh, thanks to you and all the community, to try to give away all our data and results. So, very last thing, this is costing a lot of money. How much and is it worth it? <laughs> I don't know, we say it's, it costs some money, it's a lot. We're talking 1.6 billion uh, to go to uh, Jupiter. Is it a lot? It's hard to say these days, 1 billion, what does it mean? But no, it's a lot of money for sure. Uh, remember that we're building knowledge. We don't sell it, and oh, we're not too good for that. We're building for the, for the mankind and to learn something. And it's not money we're throwing away. It's money we use to fund industry, to fund scientists, and so on. I think the system is working pretty great. OK, if you put this 1.6 billion over 20 years, because that's the project, divided by the number of inhabitants in Europe, well, it's less than a cup of uh, tea or coffee per day, per year, sorry, per year, per right. inhabitant. Sylvester Moyes, our wizard, expert on Mars and, of course, Jupiter. OK, it's going to take eight years to get there. What's one more day? We can wait another day. We can wait. So back to you in Paris in the studio, and we'll, of course, bring you more updates on what's happening on the JUICE launch to Jupiter imminently tomorrow, we're being told around the same time. All right, we'll talk to you All tomorrow, right. I'm sure, Chris. Thanks very much indeed. Chris Bachman talking there to the astrophysicist Sylvester Maurice. Thanks you both very much indeed.